Hello, Carrie here. I'm working on some embellishments for my art journals. These are some lovely tag ones that, um, I forgot the name of the lady, but I'll attach it down below, who um, I saw a video of hers, probably a year ago actually, I don't know how it popped up in my thing, but I saw it and I thought I would have a go at making them. And so what I've done is I've cut out some tags and, ooh, that was quick, that's what, that's what the ones I've done look like. So basically they're tags, they're stamped and then there's a postage stamp on, an old one and then some fabric behind. So here's, I'm going to start and make one from start to finish. So the tag is already cut out. I'm sorry, I've gone a bit off screen there. Oh, there we go, back in. I'm trying to get it closer in because these are small items. So I've got the camera zoomed in, but I'm not used to being at that distance. So excuse me if I do go a bit off screen every now and then. Anyway, so I'm just going to stamp this lovely French stamp of mine, which don't ask me where it comes from because I found it in an antique shop. Uh, so I've stamped it and now I'm going to find a postage stamp. I've selected quite a few here that I like. So I'm going to use this lovely one with the blue background. Beautiful little antelope there. I'm just going to pop some glue on. I'm just using simple glue stick for this. There we go. Pop that on. And I've got to find some fabric that matches. So I want something with a bit of blue. Pop that there. It doesn't stand out very well against the background I've got it down. So I put that white behind so you can see it better. Now I'm going to find a button. I've got plenty of buttons. So a nice blue button. I'm going to use these bulb clips. I've got a few of them left from my knitting selection, but I've got some more um, on the way to me in the post next week, probably. I've got to, I'm going to be doing a haul next week because I've got some stuff coming. Oh, I'm so excited. I haven't bought anything for um, this sort of thing for ages. So there's a little bit of fabric there with a bit of blue in it. And I'm going to attach a little bit of lace as well. In some, I've used a bit of ribbon as well, but this will do for this one. So open up the bulb, pop the, you have to open it up a bit further. That's it. Pop the button on, put the tag on, and then a bit of lace. Make sure it's catching it and a bit of the fabric. There we go. Close the bulb and that's ready to pop onto a book or a book page. So here's a few I've made there. Now, the other thing that I want to make is, now this is from Pam from the Paper Outpost, I think. I've seen her do these. These are little side side tags um, that she's made using a paper clip. I'm, she uses lar used larger ones. I've only got these at the moment. Um, what I've done with my paper clips, by the way, are my, not paper clips, safety pins. Safety pins is the word. I've, I bought them, but they're all dead shiny. So I put them with some vinegar and some salt um, and let them soak for a few days. And they've come and they've become a little bit tarnished. They haven't rusted, I think, because they're uh, stainless steel, but they have become a bit more patinaed, which I quite like. So I'm layering some fabrics there. I'm using three. I use some ribbon that's the perfect size, a little bit of fabric and possibly some lace or some um, uh, muslin. I think it's muslin I use for this one. There we go. Yes. So I just need to cut it to size. I mean, you could layer paper. I was thinking some book page would be quite nice. A little bit of dust on that. And then I found it easier to open it up and do it this way. It would be so much easier with a larger one, but I need to get some. Then you close it and then I just sew along the edge there to hold it in place. So I'll be back in a sec with it all sewn. Here we are. So that's all sewn. All I need to do is trim the um, threads now and then add some beads to the top. So I'm trying to coordinate the colours with the fabric. Of course, I could have a bit of pink. Sorry, I haven't got my proper glasses on. I'm a <laughs> well, I have got my proper glasses on, but I haven't got my close 
really close glasses on for this sort of fiddly thing. Whoops, didn't want that one anyway. There we go. I'll just trim off some of this thread. I, I like some of the thread dangling off actually. So there it is. That's quite easy to use. You just pop, open it up and pop it on the side of a book page. I'll show you that in a bit. Oh, I will pop that one on. Will that close still? Yes, that's nice. And that's so, so nice. I love that. And that's nice to have things on the side of your book. Quite often have things on the top or dangling at the bottom. It's nice to have the tabs and things on the side. So I'm going to make another one. I'm going to go with the pink theme for this one. So I'm getting pink, pink, pink and purple bits together. Quickly going to go and sew those. And I've got some lovely coordinated colour beads here, pinks and purples. I don't do jewellery making, but occasionally I have a little bit of a double or so. Over the years, I've acquired a few beads here and there. I also um, like to go around charity shops and pick up bits of jewellery that um, appeal to me for uh, interesting beads and interesting charms and things like that. They're very useful for this sort of thing. You'll see more in a minute. I'm going to show you some of the other embellishments. That's lovely. I love that one. I think another bead could go on. I think I'll squeeze another one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put that one on. There we go. That's better. So that's those two. I love them. They're so cute. I'm going to quickly get a book over here. And I'm, so, I'm sorry, it's slightly off screen. But um, I'll shush it up in a bit. You'll see what I've done. <laughs> so this is how you attach them. You just glue them on like that. Aren't they lovely? I love that. It's so nice to have things on the side of the book. So that's those. Oh, I love those. I'm really pleased with them. And that's, um, yes, that's how the tags can be attached. Well, they can be attached any way you like, really. <laughs> so that's these two. I'm just giving you a bit of a close up, see what they look like. So I hope that sparks some ideas for those. The next things I'm going to be showing you are how I do uh, the jewellery danglies. But I'm going to do a quick, a quick review of all these things that I've made so far. Because there are more than I made of the tags especially. Couldn't stop doing them once I started. Oh, I tried some round tags as well. I had some little wooden discs. So I tried a couple of those and they worked out great as well. So here's the one I just showed you. Isn't that lovely? And there's these as well. And what I've done, I've colour coordinated the stamp with the button with the fabric. And I think that looks quite effective. And that'll work quite well with different pages in your books. There, aren't they? I love, love that stamp. It's beautiful. All the peachy colours there, peachy pinky colours. And these are the side tabs. Aren't they gorgeous? I love those. Certainly going to make larger ones of those. And here they are attached to a book. That's on the front of my little 6x6 black page book. That goes really well there. I love that. I love that little Australian stamp. Gorgeous. And so here's, here's the third type of embellishment I want to make. Well, I have been making, as you can see. I made several of these. And now I'm just attaching methods to attach them to books. So I'm using the bulb pins. Uh, this one I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use up, finish up all my bulb pins because I do have more. I'm going to use that silver one. That goes quite well with that. Try to coordinate the bulb pins with the actual danglies. It's not always possible, but I try. That one, I'm using a safety pin, one of my um, patented safety pins. Can't close it. There we go. <laughs> that one's already got a clasp, which I put on. That one's got a clasp. It's these, um, what do they call them? Claw clasps? Crab claw clasps? Lobster claw clasps? Anyway, this one needs a bulb pin, I do believe. That's nice. I've got some coloured ones coming as well. There we go, I like that one. One of my patented safety pins. There we go. 
Yeah, that's a nice one. I like that one. So I've got all these done. I've got all these still to do. <laughs> that's a dragon. I love that. And I'm going to show you in a minute how I actually make one. Although I don't think this is going to be new to many people because we all do this, don't we? Oh, I love that one with the owl. That's got a claw, lobster claw clasp. Pop a safety pin on that one. That's got a little clock on it to watch. Oh, you can't see it. I haven't turned it over. Never mind. You'll see that in a minute. I'll do a slow motion going over these shortly. So I'm keeping them on this larger safety pin, but now I'm going to actually make one. So I've got a little bit of chain. I've got some of these lobster claws, move that out of the way. And I've got some uh, rings. I've got a butterfly. And what to do is I just basically open the ring. The thing I've got on my finger is very handy for opening rings. I don't know what it's called, but jewellery makers use them because you're not meant to pull rings apart. You're meant to twist them and that's perfect. There we go. And then you can close it with it as well. There we go. So I like to put about three items on a chain at various lengths. Now I'm going to pop a feather on. Again, I collect charms from all sorts of places. Um, I buy bits and pieces from charity shops. And occasionally I'll buy the odd thing on eBay, but uh, not very often. I'm not using my jewellery pliers here. Just using ordinary pliers long-nosed ones so attaching it to a bit of chain struggling a bit there to see what I'm doing and then I'm gonna close that up and then I'm going to get another ring and attach it higher up on this bit of chain. I was going to take that bit off, but I decided not to in the end, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it over and have the ring in the middle of that chain. So there's more dangling. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So instead of having it on the end, which I'd initially intended, I have it a bit further down. And I'm just attaching it to the chain there. There, that's two items. Now I need a third. And I shall then consider it complete. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, attach some beads to this wire. Start with a small one and then some larger ones. going to bend that over and then wrap it around the pliers to make a bit of a circle. There we go. And I just need to make a get another ring to attach it to the chain. 
So getting lengths of chain is very useful. As I say, charity shops. I put that near the top so they all um, are staggered throughout the length of the chain. Sorry, I've got a bit off screen again there. It's because I can't see very clearly. There we go. So now I just need to attach a clasp at the top. Um, I was going to use the smaller one, but I realised they've only got a small hole and the rings that I've got don't really fit. I get it out and look at it and think, no, that's not going to work. Definitely not going to work. So I've got to, I need to use the larger one. It's got a larger hole. I haven't got many of these left. So another ring. Get the pliers. Open it up. Put the lobster claw on. Find the top of the chain. <laughs> Pop that in there. And then close it up. There we go. Sorry, off screen again there. There we go. That's it finished. Lovely. So that'll be lovely hanging from a spine. Or I sometimes just pop them in a page as well. So I'll pop that on my safety pin and that's all my embellishments I've got. So I'm just going to quickly uh, show you them. There we go, closer up because you couldn't really see them very well. So all sorts of methods of attachments, all sorts of danglies I've got there. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I hope it's set off some ideas in your head to try. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.